Joe Bortz from Highland Park, Illinois, and uh, we're here at the show, and we brought the two LaSalle's uh, 1955 Motorama cars. Roadster was designed by Carl Renner, who was his favorite designer. After the cars were shown, they were put in storage. And in 1957-58, there was a severe recession. The bean counters who were running General Motors decided, hey, let's get rid of this storage overhead and we'll junk out some cars. So they sent these cars to the Warhoops junkyard. They have them cut and crushed. And uh, the owner, while the General Motors guy was there, he cut what he had to, which was the LaSalle Roadster and the Biscayne. And then the other two cars, he didn't have to cut because the guy said, I know you're going to cut them and crush them. i got to get home. It's Christmas time. And he left, and he hid those cars in tech. 1988, we heard about it. And the owner wanted us to have because he had heard about our reputation for restoring concept cars. We kind of took our time at the LaSalle Roadster. Uh, we just finished, and so it's about 25 years that it took us on and off to get the car restored. This one here will be next, maybe in the next three years we might have it restored if we really get industrious with it. The sedan is just about the way it came out of the junkyard, except it's been just cleaned up, and we put a new windshield in it, when it you know, and we did that for this show, because without the windshield you can't see the silhouette of, uh, silhouette of the lines of the car. So we did uh, make the windshield new, that's quite an endeavor because it's wrapped around into the roof, it's wrapped around on the sides. The Roadster, when we got it, it was missing the doors, the hood, and the whole nose piece. And everything else was there. The bumpers and the trim and everything was all it was all there. So we had pictures for, uh, supplied by General Motors and from the pictures we were able to make new pieces and fill it in and make the car probably today better than it was on the showroom at, uh, at the Waldorf Fiscori Hotel. The engines that are in there are uh, the full engines with no insides because they were still testing the, uh, the test engines on engine stands, but they wanted to show off the engine, so if you open up the hood, it looks like a full working engine, but there wasn't any. And they were going to electrify the cars in the trunks to be able to have a mobile, and they didn't have time to do that, so they became push mobiles. When we restored the Roadster, we electrified it so you can get in and drive it down the road, but it's running electrically because we didn't want to pull out the engine that was there and replace it with some running engine that would deface the car. One of the things I'd like to show you is the uh, unique engine. Uh, it's a V6 aluminum block, double overhead cam, fuel injected engine. Had General Motors picked up on this and put it into their future cars in 56, 57, they would have had the leg up on the Europeans instead of the opposite. The engine started and stopped with these two cars. It's a very, very unique engine. Another interesting fact on this car is that the dimensions on this car are exactly the 1960 Corvair, the length, the width, the height. So they were thinking about compact cars then, they were playing with them in terms of dimensions. Chrome here, look at this chrome. 30 years in the junkyard, hardly a pit in it. So, you know, it shows you if people want to make quality, it'll, it'll last. And then if you come around here on this side over here, you see the scoop on the side here? That became emblematic of the 56, 57, all the way to the 60, 61 Corvettes. The wraparound windshield, not only on the sides, but on the top, 1959. And uh, stainless steel top, 1957, 58 Cadillac Eldorado Bro, 58 Pontiac taillights. The wheels are unique. This is actually the brake drum and there's a rim that attaches to the brake drum. And uh, that became the Pontiac 8-lug wheel, and they were thinking about putting the white wall right around the rim. This is the original rear window in a junkyard for 30 years, and we, of course, polished it, and it doesn't have a scratch in it. This car here is the Roadster version of the LaSalle 2. And the reason it's called LaSalle is because Harley Earl wanted it to be a special project. He didn't want it to be a project of any division. And it was his swan song because he knew he was going to retire and he wanted to leave two cars that, were, that he felt was his best work. And there's a very interesting novelty factor about this car. The front emblem, which is the LaSalle front emblem that he had made, if you look closely, you'll see a dog on it. That's Harley Earl's dog. This car, 
was scheduled to be the 56-57 Corvette design. If you look in the Corvette books, you'll see that. And for whatever reason, they decided to modify the original 53 design and not use this design. But they did use the cove on the side again. The windshield was very similar to the 56-57 Corvette. And the steering wheel is similar to the 56-57 um, Corvette. And another unique thing about this car, because it was a show car, we have mirrors under the car. You can actually see the chrome suspension. They're very unusual. General Motors, it's the only car I know of where they really did the bottom in chrome. Another unique feature about the car is the way the doors open. They call it suicide doors. Of course, that's because if you open it up, or the door opens up while you're driving it, it gets caught by the wind, it whips it open. But, and of course, the, this is a unique feature to many, many of the concept cars is the push button door opening. And it's a very, very beautiful interior, bucket seats, has the automatic shift control in the center. It's a very simplistic interior, which was uh, kind of European. The color scheme is uh, very striking for this car. They had an interior designer named Henry Love, and as I understand it, Henry Love supplied many, many proposals for the color of the interior and the car, and eventually they came upon this combination. The tires have a white line going down the center of the tires, so that's always interesting. There really are no windows because it's a prototype. They, they didn't get that far. There's no top for the car, but uh, that's how it was with concept cars. It's your V6 aluminum, black, double overhead cam, fuel injection engine, independent uh, rear suspension, and somewhat of a torque drive, drive shift. These cars are unique. I consider these the most important, iconic cars of the 20th century because in 1955, General Motors was the largest corporation in the world. And what happened was they got so carried away with design that they didn't pay attention to engineering. And for some unknown reason, maybe because these were Harley Earl's cars, these two cars got the unique V6 aluminum block double overhead cam engines with independent rear suspension. And none of that was ever used going forward but it came in from the Europeans in the 60s like revelations. And there was the turning point for GM, in my opinion. You know, slow, but you know, it happened. And uh, had they picked up on the innovations engineering-wise that were in these cars, today uh, there might be a totally different United States.